We want to talk a little bit about something that anyone that's watched television in the last 10 years will understand, and that's probiotics. Prebiotics, and a new word that's cool now is called symbiotics. I think if you look at some of the literature in both the popular press and definitely in, in the scientific uh, community, we have uh, a lot of people that will tell you that probiotics are going to be the antibiotics in the 21st century. And I think they're correct. Uh, it's amazing what we can do with specific probiotics. We can, we can impact reproduction. We can impact mental stability and attitude. We can impact obesity. We can do all of that through the microbes in the gut. If we talk about in the human side, and, and there was a really good article in, in the New Yorker that talked about you have more cells in your gut than you have in your whole body. It's the same thing in the horse. For us to be able to digest products, or to get nutrients for a lot of different type of products, and especially when we're talking about the horse and, and having to break down forages and, and, and grasses and, and things, the, the, the bugs that are in the large gut are critical. So when we get to talking about digestive products and where we are, if we go back years ago, all the products had essentially the same five lactic acid bacteria. They had them in there at somewhere around 100 to maybe 150 million total colony forming units per dose. Well, if we fast forward through to today, we're starting to see products that are more targeted, much higher numbers as far as the bacteria and the yeast go, the live yeast, and how they can impact that. So that brings us to Digestate. And Digestate is a new type of uh, quote, probiotic, then in reality is a symbiotic. And a symbiotic is a probiotic and a prebiotic combined. Now, what a prebiotic does is it feeds the bugs. It feeds the microflora that uh, currently or normally inhabit the horse's uh, digestive tract, specifically in the large gut. So in this product, we use something called mannan oligosaccharides that is the prebiotic. So we've got something here that's feeding all the good guys that are already in the gut. And then we went back and there's some, some data in the literature that shows that if we can stimulate the, the immunity of the mucosa of the gut, the largest immune system in your body, the largest immune system in the horse's body is the gut. So we have a, some things in here called beta-glucans. What beta-glucans do is they stimulate this mucosal immunity. So what we're doing is we're not only impacting digestion, we're helping strengthen and support the immune system in this horse by using Digestate. Now, if we go back and look at the older products that had Lactobacillus acidophilus, KCI, Enterococcus facium, some of these, these types of, of lactic acid bacteria that are still on the market, they're still good products, but we've, we've moved forward. We're, we're several steps ahead of that now to where, for example, in Digestaid, it has a, a, a probiotic in it called Pediococcus acylactase. And it's in there at 10 billion, that's 10 to the 10th, 10 billion colony forming units per dose. Well, we know the genetics on this Pediococcus. The other thing that's really cool about Pediococcus is that you can feed it when your horse is undergoing a regimen of antibiotics, whether it's oral or injectable antibiotics. So we have something in here that, in remembering when you use antibiotics, they're, for the most part, they're fairly non-discriminatory. They kill everybody. So what we're doing is we're trying to help keep that horse from getting diarrhea and digestive upsets by using Digestaid when we've got that horse on an antibiotic regimen that your veterinarians put you on. The other thing that we have in here is something called Saccharomyces boulardii. And we know the genetics on it. And if you'll look on the directions uh, and the ingredients, it'll tell you it's Saccharomyces boulardii 1079 where we know the genetics. So again, we know that the bacteria that in there or the yeast in there are gonna be the same ones every time. 
there's not going to be any variation in it. Then we have Saccharomyces cerevisiae 1077, again, known genetics. Now, the neat thing about Ballardi and Pediococcus and this cerevisia is that we know from the data that, that, uh, uh, it, that was in the literature that it makes it through the stomach. It makes it through the acid, the pH of the stomach, so that they reach the, the uh, small gut and the large gut where they're effective. A lot of the bacteria that are used in other products probably have an issue getting through a pH of 1.5 to 2, which is a lower pH in the stomach. So we know that what we have in here is effective. We know the numbers in here. There's 30 billion total CFUs per dose of Pediococcus, Ballardi, and Cerevisia. Now, it comes in both, the, both a paste and a powder. It can be used, the powder's more economical. And the way I use it at home on my cutting horses is under normal circumstances, I'll use it anywhere from two to four times a week. Anytime we have stressful situations, weather changes, cold fronts, warm fronts, pressure changes, rain, I, I do it every day. As soon as that weatherman tells me it's going to do something, I'll start and I will stay on that until I get through the weather change. The other time is if I'm getting ready to go to a cutting, for example, and I'm going to leave on Wednesday, I will start using the Gest Aid on Tuesday, and my horses will get it every day that we're gone, and at least one to two days when I return home. So I use it any time I'm going to go through a stressful situation. I want to maintain as good a digestive tract health as I can through stress. Remember what stress does is stress, stress suppresses the immune system. Well, I've got the uh, beta glucans in here so that I'm helping support the largest immune organ in the whole body. So I always use this uh, any type of uh, getting stressful situations. I use the paste if I'm in a situation and I say, I, I, you know, uh, I want to get this in my horse now. Or if I get a horse that goes off feed. If I get a horse that's not eating, then I go to the paste, because that way I'm going to ensure that I get that product in my horse on a daily basis, two to three times a day, or whatever uh, that, that I decide or my veterinarian and I decide we need to do. When we talk about how do we administer, how do we give these products, the, the powder, uh, the palatability is fantastic. I mean, when we do any of our products on, on uh, our supplements, we do a palatability study. And the acceptability on that, I remember, is 100%. Now, so it, you have a little scoop in there, you just take it and put it on top of their daily feed. It's very easy to do. As far as a paste, uh, I'm not as concerned about palatability because I'm the one that decides the horse is going to get it. But if you have something, the only thing he's going to do is spit it out immediately, then that's not good. So we have, we have it flavored in such a way that uh, they, will, they will go ahead and, and swallow it. Uh, if you do it like on any other paste, when you go in the side of the gum, you go as far up the uh, gum as you can and deposit uh, the 15 cc's of 30 or 60 or whatever the directions tell you to do based on what your need is.